Friends, as we come to the Word of God today, I want to encourage you to grab a Bible if you have one nearby, to open it to Mark 1 verses 9 to 13. I'm going to be putting the words on the screen shortly and we're going to read them together. But I want to encourage you, if you have a Bible nearby, just to follow with us as we go through our sermon. There will be a few other scriptures that we'll be using as well. But our reading today is from Mark 1 verses 9 to 13. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And it reads as follows from verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan, and was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we come to your holy scriptures today, we ask that you'd speak into our hearts and our lives, that you'd open our hearts and our minds to understand what it is you are saying to us as well. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, on Wednesday we began a new season in the church calendar. We began the season of Lent. So what is Lent? Since at least 33 common era, the church has prepared for Easter with a season of 40 days of fasting. The season of Lent is understood as a, as a way of remembering and sharing in Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness. Something that we, we heard about in our reading from Mark 1 this morning. In these 40 days, Jesus, com Jesus committed himself to God's will. And that commitment was tested. Was he and his life really given to serve God alone? Was his father's word only the word listening to and obeying? Resisting the temptation to settle for an easy life, Jesus embraced the calling that would lead him to the cross, choosing God's will. Friends, Jesus emerged from the wilderness, as Luke 4, 14 puts it, in the power of the Spirit ready for the years of public ministry that would lead to the cross of Good Friday and ultimately the resurrection, of overcoming sin and death of Easter that we look forward to as we enter the season of Lent. Friends, similarly, as we follow the 40 days of Lent by fasting, we reflect on our calling to be disciples. During Lent, we choose to deny ourselves some material comfort as a way of heightening and intensifying our pursuit of God and God's will for our lives. Friends, Lent is a season in which we commit ourselves to, to self-reflection and growing in a deeper relationship with God. In other words, renouncing and repenting of our sins and turning back to Christ and being faithful to Christ. Remember on Ash Wednesday, this past Wednesday, as that cross was put on your forehead, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Repent of sin and be faithful to Christ. That sets the tone and the commitment for the period of Lent that lies ahead as we enter these 40 days of fasting. With, with today being the first Sunday of Lent, a, a season in the church calendar which prepares us spiritually as we enter this time of, of spiritual formation. And prepare ourselves for the coming Easter. We, we enter a time of intentional spiritual, spiritual formation. In our reading today, we encounter Jesus. And there's a lot that's happening in our reading today, friends. We, we open our reading and first thing we get is Jesus and his baptism. Jesus comes in that moment and is baptized. As he comes up out of the waters of the baptism, he's affirmed by God. As Jesus submits himself to the waters of baptism, as he, is, as he emerges, the Spirit descends on him and the voice of God comes in that space. In our reading, we're, we're told in our, in our first few verses, we're told in, in verse 10, 
Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I'm well pleased. So as Jesus comes up, the Holy Spirit descends on him in the form of a dove. And God affirms God. God affirms Jesus. God, the Holy Spirit, who comes and settles on Jesus, empowering Jesus, strengthening Jesus, and affirming Jesus. But also God speaking in that space, saying, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I'm well pleased. In other words, Jesus is God the Son, beloved of God, who is pleased even before he begins his ministry with him. So friends, we we have a a triune God represented here. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit present in our reading in this moment. God in God's totality with us in that space. But it's in that next moment that we get these words in the following verse. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. So just as Jesus comes and is baptized, that's a high point in his life. He's sent out into the desert for 40 days for a season of testing. And it's in that space that we enter a time of testing as well, friends, as we come to the season of Lent. Today, I hope that we can learn from Jesus what it looks like and how to overcome the temptations that Jesus faced and that we will face during this time of Lent as well. In our reading from Mark 1, we don't get much of much detail about the time of testing. We are simply told in verse 13, And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. However, Matthew 4 verses 1 to 11 give us a little bit more detail. So I'm going to use Matthew to help us understand what this tempting by Satan looks like. From verse 1, Matthew 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan! For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. So we get quite a, a detailed picture from Matthew's gospel compared to that one liner that that Mark shares with us about Jesus being tempted. And it's in that space that we gather as the children of God because temptation is normal. I'm going to say it again, friends. Temptation is normal. We're all tempted and we will all be tempted. It's part of being human. Now, if you haven't been tempted... Perhaps you're falling into temptations every time. Just a thought. But the reality is we will be tempted, friends. It's part of who we are. Especially as we come at this time. And friends, we, we all know what it feels like to be tempted. And to fall into temptation by acting on that tempting. I mean, let's use an example, perhaps trivial, but maybe appropriate for some of us. That extra piece of cake. Now it's there. You, everyone's had cake You're full and you've eaten your full of cake already. But it was oh so good. You know that moment. And you just can't resist. What about those late night movies? You know the the kind I'm talking about, right? Friends, Jesus knew that we would struggle with sin. 
So he even made it part of the Lord's Prayer that we prayed earlier in our service as well. Lead us not into temptation. The CEV puts it this way. Keep us from being tempted. The Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, the Bible, the message puts it this way. Keep us safe from ourselves. Perhaps we need to ask the question, when are we most tempted? In our reading, in our reading today, we, we know that Jesus was at his most vulnerable. Jesus had been in the desert for 40 days and for 40 nights, and he was hungry. It was then when he was at his weakest that the devil came to tempt Jesus. Friends, it's in these types of moments that our true character is realized when we're at our weakest. Jesus was fully God and, and fully man. Remember our reading from Mark 1, as Jesus is affirmed as the Son of God, this is my Son. You are my Son, whom I love. With you I'm well pleased. Jesus comes as the Son of God, but he also comes as a human being. And it's into this time of, of testing that Jesus comes, not as God, but as human. So what do we do when we face temptations? Friends, what do you do when you face temptations? Perhaps you try to divert your thoughts. Perhaps you, 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 you entice them and you, you sit there and say, hmm, that would be interesting. I want to spend a few minutes briefly looking at what we can learn from how Jesus resisted the temptations that would come to him in our reading. In our reading, we, we, we begin in verse 3 of, of Matthew 4, and it reads as follows. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No! The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Friends, in our scripture reading from Matthew 4, we encountered Jesus very hungry, physically hungry after having fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Now, friends, that's a long time, 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know about you, but, but I have this thing called hangry. If I don't go with food for a couple of hours, something happens with my blood sugar, I get irritable, I get fidgety, and I get perhaps a bit grumpy as well. I don't know if you have that same problem, friends. But, but I call it the hangry problem we get because we become hungry, angry when we don't eat for a couple of hours. Can you imagine Jesus after 40 days and 40 nights? It's into this place of physical need that Satan brings the first temptation. He says to Jesus, if you are the son of God, note the, the tempting of him there. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Friends, Satan is trying to play on Jesus' physical need and tries to tempt Jesus through them, through his hunger. But Jesus' response helps us better understand this temptation. When he says, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Friends, Jesus could easily have turned those stones into loaves of bread and eaten them to satisfy his own hunger. He could have used that divine power. But there, there are four problems with that, friends. The first is the timing is wrong. Jesus was in the desert and fasting. It wasn't a time for eating, and he was not eating for a God-given specific reason. He was being tested in that time. So the timing was wrong. Secondly, Jesus also, throughout the Gospels, never used his divine power to meet his own needs. I mean, can you imagine if Jesus did? On the cross, agonizing, Jesus getting up and saying, listen, I've had enough, I'm out of here. But Jesus doesn't, friends. He doesn't use his divine power to meet his own needs. Thirdly, Jesus was walking in obedience to God. And he uses Deuteronomy 3 to resist this temptation as he says script people do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god and fourthly jesus says that we need to depend on god and god's provision and purpose over our own so friends how are you physically tempted perhaps you get hangry Perhaps there's a hunger there, a lust, a greed, a gluttony, sexual immorality, impatience. 
And the list can go on, friends. But we need to learn from Jesus how to overcome our physical temptations by using Scripture, the Word of God, to, to refocus our attention on God and God's purpose and provision for our lives. Friends, Jesus responds to Satan's temptation for that physical needs by quoting Scripture, by depending on the Word of God. Our reading goes on in verse 5 when it says, then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not put the Lord your God. Sorry, you must not test the Lord your God. So friends, Satan's getting wise to Jesus' tactics. So Satan takes scripture and attempts to, to manipulate Jesus through scripture. Now this is the second temptation and, and Satan attempts, attempts to tempt Jesus through his emotional needs by attacking his identity. Note these words in our reading. If you are the son of God. Remember the first temptation? If you are the son of God. And now again, if you are the son of God. Jump off. Here Satan uses scripture to tempt Jesus. But Satan uses the scripture out of context. So in other words, he distorts the meaning of that scripture when he quotes Psalm 91 verses 11 and 12. He takes it completely out of context. Because Psalm 91 speaks about God protecting those who walk in obedience to God's will. Satan is trying to emotionally tempt Jesus in his need for security, in his identity as the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, jump off. Friends, again, we, we learn much in Jesus' response in verse 7. Scripture also says, you must not test the Lord your God. Here Jesus quotes, quotes Deuteronomy 6.16 and the need to focus on God and obedience to God's will. Friends, how are we emotionally tempted? Perhaps pride, insecurity about our own identity and who we are and who we are in God. The temptation and need to test God at times. I think this for me is best seen through those prayers that, that some people pray and, and sometimes we pray ourselves. God, if you love me, you will. You know the prayers that we, we often pray, those type of prayers to try and manipulate God because of our own insecurities. Friends, we need to learn from Jesus how to overcome our emotional temptation by using scripture to refocus our attention onto God and focus on God in obedience to the will of God in our lives. So friends, Jesus responds to Satan's temptation for the emotional needs that he has. Our reading goes on in verse 8. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, he told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Friends, in this third and final temptation, Satan attempts to tempt Jesus through his psychological needs, through his ego. Here, Satan uses the psychological needs of significance, power and achievement to try to tempt Jesus. Satan says that he'll give him all these things. He'll give them to Jesus, the kingdoms of the world, if he will only bow down and submit and worship Satan. Jesus turns and has a hand up. He says, get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Friends, Jesus' response uses scripture again from Deuteronomy 6 verse 13, which speaks about not compromising with evil. Jesus knew that whatever we worship, we will end up serving. Now I'm going to say it again, friends. Whatever we end up worshiping, we will end up serving as well. So how are we tempted physically, uh, emotionally and psychologically? Friends, how, how are we psychologically tempted? Perhaps into appeasing our, our own egos, 
perhaps the desires for quick power, quick cash, quick and easy solutions, the need to, to prove equality with others and with God. What are we worshipping? And through worshipping, ending up serving. Perhaps it's ourselves, our possessions, our pretenses, our egos, our possessions, our positions, our power. There are many things that we end up worshipping because we end up serving them because we worship them. So friends, we need to learn from Jesus how to overcome our psychological temptation by using scripture to refocus our attention on God and focusing on God and our worship of God and serving only God. Got it? Physical, psychological, as well as emotional. All of who we are, heart, mind, soul, and strength, is tempted. And friends, as we, we grow closer to God through the season of Lent, we will be tempted. But let us not fall into temptation by using the Word of God to overcome all temptations that we begin to face. That refocus our attention back onto God and God's purpose and provision in our lives for the physical that focus us back on God and what God says about us so that we can focus our attention back onto God and obedience to the will of God in our lives as we are emotionally tempted. What the scriptures say to us as we refocus our attention on God and focus on our relationship with God as we worship God, as we psychologically tempted to appease our egos and worship those things in our lives. So as I close up, I want to invite you to spend some time this week in personal reflection, examining, firstly, when are you tempted the most? Is it in the evening, in the morning, when you're bored? When are you most tempted? And how are you tempted? Once you've got those, lift them up to God in prayer. So spend some time in self-examination, and then lift up the product of that self-examination to God in prayer. And ask God to help you. Ask God to, to help you, guide you through the Word of God to overcome our temptations. Perhaps get in reading the Word of God so that you are able to know what God says in those moments. That you are a beloved child of God, loved by God, and whom God loves, and with whom God is well pleased. I want to encourage you this week as we continue through our Lenten journey, that as you give something up, whatever that is, and that's between you and God, whether it's chocolate, coffee, carbs, social media, whatever you're giving up for Lent. Keep it between you and God. Don't make a show of it. But as you give that up, I want to encourage you to take something up as well. I want to encourage you to take up the reading of God's Word. Maybe you need to take a look at how much screen time you're using for entertainment purposes, soapies, streaming services, and maybe cut those down or do away with them for, for, for the season of Lent. And as you do, spend some time reading God's Word and getting to know what God has to say to you in this moment and time. With that said, let's come to a word of prayer. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we thank you that you are a holy and loving God. You love us so much that you sent Jesus to come and to teach us how to overcome. That as we enter the season of testing, we, we see Jesus being tested as well. As we grow and seek to grow in relationship with you, we ask, help us, Almighty God, to overcome the sin in our lives, those things that hinder us, those temptations that often lead us into sin, that we may overcome them, physical, emotional, and psychological, that often trip us up and make us feel so bad about ourselves. We come and we ask that you'd forgive us, Almighty God, for where we have fallen short, and strengthen us, to be able to get into your word and, and hear what you're saying to us through your scriptures in those moments. So, Father, help us to know what to do with what we've heard today. That we may put it into practice in our lives, in every moment and situation, as we seek to draw nearer to you. Help us, we pray, for we ask this in your precious name, Jesus, now and always. Amen.